I've coded a destruction plugin for Godot. I often find destruction in games very unsatisfying. Either the object completely explodes into a bunch of little pieces, or it's like Minecraft and you can destroy the bottom of something and the top of it just floats. Both of these methods kind of feel like objects don't really have some sort of structure. They feel kind of weak, like they're not held together by anything. A game that provides the opposite of this feeling would be Red Faction Guerrilla. I don't know why I'm so enamored by this game. I think it also just reminds me of home and how it feels like to drive on Australian roads. How does this kind of destruction work? In my opinion, it appears every destructible asset is composed of multiple pieces. Each piece has their own collision shape and associated to a single collision body. When the body is damaged or forces are applied to it, there is also an underlying graph structure which is damaged. The graph structure maintains the bonds between the pieces. If a bond is broken, a piece may be detached from the body. If a bond is broken in such a way that multiple graphs are created, each graph becomes its own body. This is how my add-on works, and if I enable the debug view, you can see the graph change alongside the body. Creating a destructible asset with this add-on is quite simple. You need to use the baked fracture node, and each collision shape must have its mesh as a child. When you want to create the graph structure, you just press the glue button found here. Now you can see the graph structure. Each node in the graph is a button that upon being pressed will toggle that node as an anchor point. An anchor point is any node you require to be broken before the body can move like a normal rigid body. My add-on can't handle bodies with as many objects as Red Faction, but I'm hoping to improve performance in the future. The biggest limitation of this add-on is for game designers. If you make destruction part of your game, make sure that you are consistent. For example, if a door is breakable, but a window is not, you'll disappoint players when they find out about your invincible windows. If you plan on making every asset destructible, you should consider this at the start of your project, and these games are often sandboxes. For developers who don't want to make complete sandboxes, I recommend using this plugin for cosmetic effects only. If you'd like to try this plugin, you can download it for free from the GitHub link I've added to the description of this video. There are separate branches for Godot 3 and Godot 4.